Hello everyone, and welcome to The Poor Man's Chemist. In this video, we're going to be looking at something that's just a bit more academically interesting. We are going to be doing the synthesis of praseodymium 3,4 oxide. Now, I've been wanting to play around with some lanthanides on this channel for a while because I am actually like a, a die-hard fan of the lanthanides. They, they don't get anything like, like the amount of love that they deserve. And, I mean, every time I hear some chemists say, you know, oh, well, yeah, you know, the lanthanides are all pretty much the same, I die a little inside because that's just so not true. The lanthanides, I mean, yes, in aqueous solution, they are all trivalent. That 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 apparently is all it takes for, I don't know, a lot of the chemists I've ever known to just kind of dismiss them. I mean, okay, that there are other solvents than water. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, I'm a big fan of them. Um, they have a lot of potential, and lanthanide chemistry is a very active area of research. Um, this compound uh, is interesting just because it forms a mixed oxide. Now, praseodymium sits right next to cerium, right at the beginning of the lanthanides. It's like the third one. Um, you have lanthanum, cerium, then praseodymium. Cerium is kind of unique in that it forms stable tetravalent compounds. So the I actually did a practice run of the exact same synthesis protocol we're about to use on cerium, using cerium metal instead of praseodymium, and I was able to create very pure cerium dioxide. So, cerium forms a stable dioxide, and again, stable tetravalent compounds, you can all, um, cerium 4 sulfate is also stable, and these are used in organic synthesis, um, as is cerium 3 chloride. Um, the praseodymium doesn't form a stable, at least not under the conditions that we live in, um, a tetravalent compound. Um, praseodymium dioxide can be synthesized but it takes some pretty trying conditions and you really have to exclude water and it, there's just no way we're going to pull that off in the lab in my backyard um but what you can do is you can um take praseodymium metal and put it through the exact same kind of reaction you would do to in order to generate cerium dioxide and it will give you a mixture um you can also look at it as pro 1.83 or PR6011. Um, it's let's see, does it have any other names? No, just praseodymium 3 4 oxide. So you can look at it as a mixture of praseodymium 3 oxide and 4 oxide. Um, like I said, that's just unusual, it's just a little weird. And praseodymium is an element that you don't come across very often. Um, certainly not on chemistry channels, not, not very many. Um, so I figured, hey, why not? You know, let's take a look at it, let's make this stuff, and let, 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 let's see what it is. So, anyway, well, with that, let's just jump right in. Alright, everybody. So, this is the praseodymium metal that I've got. Um, I'll put... Um, a subtitle up with the name of the seller that I buy my um, elements from. Um, it's the guy that I get these from off eBay. He always sells me really, really good quality stuff. Um, and I, that's who I've got this praseodymium from. So it's supposed to be very high purity, and I have no reason to doubt that it is. Um, praseodymium, um, like all of the lanthanides, is an electropositive metal. Now, some of the lanthanide metals can be stored just in a jar exposed to the atmosphere, and some of them have to be stored like you would store barium or sodium under mineral oil. Praseodymium is one of those. So, what it's sitting in now is xylene. Um, I went ahead and I pat it out, dry off the mineral oil, and it's in xylene here just to get the rest of it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of here, and I'll pat it dry again, and then I'm going to transfer it to a flask, and we are going to dissolve this in concentrated hydrochloric acid 
in order to produce praseodymium-3 chloride. Then what we'll do is we will react the solution of praseodymium-3 chloride with oxalic acid that will produce praseodymium oxalate and then we'll dry that and put it in a crucible and thermally decompose that puppy and that will give us praseodymium 3,4 oxide. So um, anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, everybody. So I've weighed this just to confirm it, and it is 10 grams exactly of praseodymium metal. Now, this should be fairly reactive, so I don't think that this is going to take very long to dissolve. Let's see here. Bring this a little closer. There we go. You guys will be able to see a little better. Let me, let me do that. There we go. All right. So ready and here goes nothing yeah, this is not like doing cadmium this stuff will dissolve pretty readily and in this case readily actually means readily so you can see that praseodymium when it dissolves forms a green solution um, all praseodymium three compounds are green <laughs> and um, that's actually um, leads to an interesting point and in that the name of the element praseodymium comes from the Greek words for green and twin which sounds like this so you can see you know where the name comes from anyway the reaction should be producing hydrogen gas and praseodymium 3 chloride all right everybody all of the praseodymium has dissolved and I also added to this um, several grams of praseodymium 3 chloride that I had made um, a while back um, I figure I might as well just go ahead and convert it all to the oxide because I mean, I don't really have another use for praseodymium, and I can always get more. It's, I mean, you can buy five or ten grams of this for about like five or ten bucks. It's not expensive at all. But anyway, you notice that, you know, its namesake, the green twin, it has an absolutely beautiful emerald green color. And, I mean, just about all aqueous solutions of any kind of soluble praseodymium salt have this color. Um... Praseodymium-4 is actually yellow. Um, I'm not sure. I think I was actually able to generate Praseodymium-4 one time. And the story behind this is wild. But I had... Um, taken praseodymium chloride that I or praseodymium 3 chloride that I had made before and I had I think it's been a long time ago and I haven't been able to get it to work again but I made it very alkaline and I added in um 35% or 30% hydrogen peroxide and it turned this yellow color that I had never seen a praseodymium you know um solution or a praseodymium compound solution have and um so um <clears throat> damn i just got stung by a fucking yellow jacket <laughs> son of a bitch i lost my train of thought anyway like i was saying it turned from this green color that every other praseodymium salt that's ever been dissolved in water that i've ever seen into a yellow color and it seemed to persist so long as the um hydrogen peroxide was breaking down to um, generate oxygen bubbles uh, it, it was I have never like I said I've never been able to get it to work again but um I mean you know yellow is the color of praseodymium 4 so I mean I, I don't know I don't know it's not supposed to be able to work that way from what I've read but I mean there you have it people <laughs> so anyway um, I know enough of my sad stories right this is our praseodymium 3 chloride solution in hydrochloric acid. This is 14 and a half grams of oxalic acid dissolved in I don't know, about 50 mils of water. And based on 
the stoichiometry that I calculated if we have exactly 10 grams of praseodymium metal and assuming that it was 10 grams of praseodymium 3 chloride that I put in there I know I didn't think to even weigh it before I dissolved it in water because I'm a bad chemist <laughs> And plus, it's really not that important. We want an excess of oxalic acid anyway. So, um, based on that, that's how I came up with 14 and a half grams. So, here we go. And the lanthanide oxalates are pretty insoluble. Let's get a little bit of water to add to that. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. All right, everybody. I don't know if you all have ever seen this before or not, but here is my simple little setup. Here at the Poor Man's Chemist, we improvise and do the best we can with what we've got. So, we have an aspirator running off a garden hose. But you know what? It works. Although it's a real pain in the ass when you want to pump something down and actually keep it dry. So, yeah. I would really love to get a vacuum pump. Good morning, everybody. So here are the results of the drying last night. This is 26 grams and change of nice, dry, fluffy praseodymium oxalate. Um, I think I'd mentioned yesterday that Praseodymium oxalate, um, like cerium oxalate, is slightly soluble in water. So what I did was I made the um, filtrate alkaline with sodium hydroxide, and that precipitated out praseodymium hydroxide. There's probably a little bit of praseodymium oxalate in it, um, but I think the majority of that is praseodymium hydroxide. So as you, like I mentioned yesterday, all praseodymium three compounds have this lime sherbet green color. Damn it, I got stung again. What is it with working with this damn compound? That is the second time I've been doing a fucking video for this thing where I've been stung by some damn yellow jacket. Jesus, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow, okay. Apparently the insects are not happy with me showing y'all about praseodymium compounds. Damn it. That is wild. That has never happened before. I've never haven't been stung out here ever. And now twice in two days when I'm doing video clips about this element. What the hell? Ow. God, that fucking hurts. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Here we go with the pyrolysis of praseodymium oxalate to praseodymium 3,4 oxide. And like I've mentioned before, this is a general method that you can use to produce the oxides of any of, at least the early lanthanides. It may work for all of them, um, although some, some of them may, you know, oxalate may not be the best choice for some of them. And, I mean, it's not the only one you can do. You could do the carbonate, you could do the hydroxide. You could do the acetate, you could do the melanate. At least with praseodymium, I know it's been done with all of them. Yeah, the wind is really moving our flame here. One of the inconveniences of working outside. You don't die as readily from toxic vapors, but the wind is not always your friend. I really hope you guys can see that okay. Yeah, it looks like you can. All right, wind, you're getting on my nerves. <clears throat> oh, 
There it goes. So you can see that it's generating um, carbon dioxide. Wow, it's like stirring a liquid. Whoa. I'm having to constantly move it around because the wind keeps blowing the flame. All right, let me turn it up some. There we go. Let's hope it doesn't start blasting out of there. And obviously the good thing about the wind is that I'm not having to breathe any of this crap. Oh, look at that, y'all. It's like stirring a liquid. That is wild. Whoa. Okay, yeah, now we're starting to get... Oh, okay, maybe turn it down just a little bit now. Of course, as soon as I turn it up, the wind stops blowing, right? Because, naturally. But that's okay. The cerium dioxide I did the other day was exactly the same. And in that one, I didn't realize you had to keep stirring it, so it actually sat there over the flame for a while. With a lid on it. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. You need to have a lid off of it. It needs to be able to get to the air. Otherwise, at least with cerium, it produces this gray powder. Which, when you stir it up, immediately decomposes. Oh, okay. I guess it is a dark brown compound. Praseodymium 3,4 um, oxide, that is. Wow. Oh, that's cool as hell. Oh, that is so neat. Incredible. Look at that. Little plumes of gas dancing off of it. Yeah, definitely don't want to breathe that. I don't think there's any carbon monoxide in there. But, again, if you need oxygen, it's a combustion of some kind, man. At least I'm presuming that it is. Man, that is putting out a lot of dust. Okay, come on. Get back down in there. Stop blowing away. You turn the heat down some. Well, that's as low as it goes. That is wild. Look at that. I can't actually see what the camera's seeing. I can't see the view screen, so I really hope this doesn't suck. I, I really hope it's not bad. Okay, come on, there you go. That is just so neat. I'll just follow wherever the brightest red spot on there is for the highest heat. Derp. I only had to do this for how long before I figured that out? Home smart. Oh, 
while I got my chemistry learning. <laughs> I'll be damned. It sure is dark brown. Look at that. <laughs> That's right. You tell him. <laughs> Fuzzy, knock it off. He's great with people, he's just not great with other dogs. Or being anywhere where he could even see them. And having to live with five other dogs makes that a little interesting for him. Alright, would you look at that? That is so cool. Now, I don't really have a way of knowing exactly when it's done, other than just whenever it, it stops, I guess, just generating gas. At that point, we're going to assume it's basically complete. Would you look at that? That is just so freaking cool. Let's see. One of the whole reasons I built my own chem lab was so that I could see weird-ass compounds like this that I would never see under any other circumstances. And now you've seen it, too. Okay, there's still a little bit of flame in there, so it's not 100% yet. Now, this should be the most oxidized form of this metal, so, I mean, I don't see it. if we overheat it. Unless it starts reacting with nitrogen. I don't know that it will. I see it's turning a lighter brown where it's in contact with the air. Almost a grayish black. Hmm. Now, cerium dioxide did this yesterday. It, it was like a bright orange wherever it was really hot like up against the um, crucible walls but then it turned more of a I don't know more of a kind of almost peachish tannish color you saw it in the picture you know what I mean okay yeah looks like the more you stir it the more that darker whatever it was goes away and now you end up with this lighter stuff here Oh, that is really hot down in there. The bottom of the crucible is red hot. I think this is just about done. That darker brown color persists until you let it contact with the air, but anything that was lighter brown that's going back underneath is turning into that darker brown, which makes me think that it's... I don't, I, I, again, cerium was doing the exact same thing yesterday, so I, I think it's done. Of course, cerium dioxide, very useful in organic synthesis. Praseodymium 3,4 oxide is used for some, well, it's been tested for some applications. It isn't really used for anything, to my knowledge. So there you go, people. That is it. Um, all I'm going to do now is let it cool down and then bottle it. And maybe try to figure something to do with it. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, that, hey, that, that's, you know, it's a weird, unusual compound. And it, it makes it worth it. Besides, praseodymium metal is not expensive at all. So, anyway... I really hope you've enjoyed this synthesis of this unusual compound. If you did, please give the video a like. If you thought it sucked, give it a dislike. That's cool too. You know, you can always comment. Do love the comments. And if you think I've earned it, then please subscribe. And until the next video, people, we'll see you later. All right, everybody, update on the anthranilic acid situation here. As you can see, I've got it evaporating down, and it's turning a brown color again. 
Ugh. This is just two evaporating dishes. It's the exact same stuff. So, yeah. I mean, hey, it is what it is. Um, as you can see where it's like crystallizing right up there on the edge, it does look a little bit lighter. Maybe. Yes, I'm trying to convince myself that that, you know, actually does. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, hey, I, I'll go ahead and I'll try at least the esterification reaction, you know, that I wanted to do um, with this stuff, and we'll see if it works. Um, might work still for TLC. It doesn't seem like it has any problem forming metal chelates, that's for sure. Um, as far as indigo dye, I'm still... I'm still not 100% sure whether or not we're going to be able to do that. I would like to, but I can't make any promises on that one. But anyway, I just wanted to keep you all updated with this little project here. Um, yeah, until the next video, bye-bye, y'all.